The Roads to Carbon Neutral, presented by Total Energies. What is the energy mix and how does it need to evolve if we are to reach a net zero future? The energy mix is the combination of fuels we use to meet our energy needs. These needs can be met by fossil fuels or renewable sources such as hydro, biomass, wind and solar power or by alternative fuels such as nuclear energy. Energy demand is increasing alongside our growing global population and each generation continues to use more energy than the one before it. To achieve a net zero future, we need to transition to a new energy mix. An energy mix that utilizes significantly fewer fossil fuels and increases renewable energy sources. Today, our energy mix is probably 80% fossil fuels and less than 20% is the net zero sources of uh, renewables and nuclear. In a 2050 net zero system, that totally flips. So we need at least renewables to make up more than two thirds of our energy mix. The energy mix varies from country to country, depending on factors such as available resources and societal demands. Therefore, each country's transition to a decarbonized energy mix will vary. Some countries have more solar and wind, some have more geothermal, some have waste grown matter we call biomass. And part of this game is mixing and matching it so we're optimizing what's best for people in a particular country. Developed nations have better access to renewable energy, but their demand for energy is higher per capita, while generally the opposite is true for developing nations. Obviously, the advanced economies have to lead the pack in a way because they are responsible for the major emissions in the past, but emerging countries are responsible for the majority of the emissions that are currently happening. All of them have to embark on the net zero journey. We've been able to get away with planning our energy system separately. For us to get to net zero, we need the resources to work together. We need to not be in our like different camps. The journey to a more decarbonized energy mix has begun. However, this transition will take time. It will require the development of new solutions through investment, innovation and global commitment. Natural gas is an essential component in the transition towards a more decarbonized energy mix. It generates around a quarter of our world's electricity and emits approximately half the CO2 of coal for power generation. Total Energies favours the use of gas as a transitional fuel and is investing in liquefied natural gas, also known as LNG. LNG is purified natural gas converted into liquid form, shrinking its volume by approximately 600%. This reduction in volume enables the gas to be stored and transported economically by tanker ships over long distances. Total Energies has been one of the key players in LNG for more than 40 years. And we are one of the few companies that have chosen to really invest throughout the whole value chain. We can't just flip a switch in order to replace all the coal production with green energy. What we can do with LNG is to really bring the gas where it has to be consumed without the need to build a very large infrastructure such as very long pipelines. LNG is flexibility. A total is today the number two player in LNG worldwide. Through hybrid energy systems, both natural gas and renewable energy can be incorporated into the energy mix for remote communities and industries which traditionally rely on fossil fuels. Hybrid devices are really interesting because they combine more than one technology. For example, we're looking at islands in Indonesia that are largely diesel powered, so they're not connected to the grid. You could add solar, you could add battery, you still keep some of the diesel. You can find a cost-effective solution that's as competitive as diesel on its own. Myth. Nuclear power is an aging energy source and is an energy of the past. In fact, nuclear is the second largest source of low carbon electricity. It has real potential to contribute to a cleaner energy mix as nuclear power reactors do not produce direct carbon dioxide emissions. In many countries, the cost of utility-scale solar energy generation is cheaper than fossil fuels. However, today, renewables alone cannot provide the power that's required across the globe. So what is set to transform the energy mix of the future? Energy storage is key to making renewable energy sources a viable replacement for fossil fuels. Without the ability to store and redistribute the power drawn from renewable sources, the supply from renewable energies is too inconsistent for grid systems to rely on. 
there are many kinds of energy storage, and they all need to be part of the future mix. So the lowest cost one is what's called pumped hydro. And then the next, as we all know, are batteries, because not only are we using it on the grid and in buildings, but in vehicles. We have a huge amount of materials of different batteries popping up all over. Digitalization can help develop a smarter energy grid, enabling greater efficiency and integrating higher shares of variable renewable power. We will have so many different devices connected to the electricity grid. So we'll have everything from a solar farm to an electric vehicle to a gas plant. So the coordination of all of that is going to be really reliant on digital and AI. Emerging cleaner fuels could also help decarbonize our global energy mix. Produced from organic material, bioenergy is derived from plants and animal waste. What you need is to provide consumers with more efficient fuels that uh, generate less CO2. And biofuels uh, generate 50% less CO2 than traditional fuels, and that's why Total Energies is currently present on this market. Last year, Air France, Total Energies and Nice Côte d'Azur Airport carried out a Nice to Paris flight fueled with 30% sustainable aviation fuel. Green hydrogen is hydrogen fuel that's created using renewable energy such as solar or wind instead of fossil fuels. It has the potential to provide clean power for manufacturing, transportation and more, and its only byproduct is water. It's critical to being able to link renewable power to applications where you can't use power directly. When you look at um, heavy trucks, buses, trains, ferries, we see hydrogen being ideal to transition away from conventional hydrocarbon-based fuels. What we need is a combination of you know, the infrastructure to get it to customers, but also customer demand. I think we'll start to see a growth of hydrogen take off. In 2020, Zero Avia completed the world's first hydrogen electric passenger flight. Although the test flight was only eight minutes long, their journey to decarbonize the aviation sector has only just begun. We're now working on the 19-seater behind me. We'll get that into the market by 2024. The next product will be a 50 to 90-seater, um, capable of flying 1,000 nautical miles. So that would take you, for example, from London uh, to Rome. But beyond that, we see bigger aircraft, over 100 seats, flying over 1,000, 2,000 nautical miles, eventually uh, addressing almost all of our aviation needs. We think it's the cleanest way for the sector to achieve its net zero ambition. Ultimately, continued innovation in green technologies will be vital in creating a sustainable energy mix for future generations. If you'd like to find out more, please visit roadstocarbonneutral.com. The Roads to Carbon Neutral, presented by Total Energies.